So in class, we're going to go over a few vocabulary terms from this computational thinking, just a few things that you should know, like a program is a set of commands that control the computer, scratch commands are blocks that snap together. Again, a programmer is the person who makes the program, and they choose the commands and put them in order. When you run a program, that means the computer is carrying out the commands, and a user, of course, is the person who runs the programmer. Again, we have inputs and outputs. Today we're going to have you input some information into the App Scratch program, and then we're going to output answers. So again, just a reminder, these vocabulary terms will be there for you. So today we're going to do input and output. Make sure you're signed into Scratch, create a new Scratch, and name it your initials input. I know I shouldn't have to say this after so many weeks, but make sure you're signed into Scratch. I still have people yesterday doing an assignment but not being logged in and couldn't share it. If you're not signed in, you can't share it. So it says rename it your initials input. Your initials input. Okay, add two sprites facing each other with an appropriate background. So I'm not going to make you watch me grab sprites. I'm going to leave the scratch cat just because it makes my life a little easier. And then pick another one. So again, the, set, the directions say they need to be facing each other. They need to be facing each other. So I'm going to grab this particular scratch cat, animal. I'm clicking dog. I have his costume. And I'm going to right here while it's selected, click horizontally so I can now see that they're facing each other. Back them up a little, back them up a little, and go back to coding. Hit that save now button every once in a while. Okay, so when the green flag is clicked for both sprites, we want to do this for both sprites. Give each sprite a start location using the blue go to. All right, so when are they going to start with the dog because that's the one I had selected. Events, when this green flag is clicked, I want it to go to that position because that's where it's currently at. I'm going to click the other sprite. And when the green flag is clicked, it's also going to go to that particular location it's currently at. It says, give each other, each sprite a location, have one sprite glide to the other after waiting one second. So I'm going to go with the dog. I'm going to have it wait a second. Then I want it to move closer to the cat. Notice I'm moving it first. That way, when I come to do my motion, when I come to do my motion, it's already in the location I want it at. It's already in the location I want it at. So let's see what's going on. I click the green flag. They both start in their start locations. And the sprite scooches over to the first one. Save it. Okay, so have the other sprite wait a second before asking, what's your name? So again, this sprite moved. This one's going to wait a second. So I'm going to add a control. Wait a second before asking what's your name. So that's a blue ask, what's your name? So again, we're going to be looking for input now. So we're going to go to sensing and ask, what's your name? Okay, let's see what happens. Click the green flag. They split apart. He pops up and says, hey, what's your name? Um, his name is Bluey. Nothing happens. How come nothing happens? Because we haven't programmed anything to happen yet. So depending on your scene and characters, your locations will not and should not match mine. So don't worry if your numbers aren't matching mine. Again, hit that save now button if it's an option. Okay, so stay on the sprite that's asking the question. So make sure that's the sprite still open and not active. Again, make sure that's the sprite still open and active. Have him say looks, the answers, to add to the regular say block. What? Okay. So it's going to ask, what's your name? Now I want it to say whatever that person said. That's still under sensing. That's answer. So let's see what happens now. They split apart. They scooch closer. The cat asks, hey, what's your name? And he's going to be saying his name is Bluey. Hey, look, it now says Bluey. Great. If done correctly, it will ask for the other sprite's name. You input a name, and it will output the name. It would be nice if it would say something like, nice to meet you, Bluey. So we're going to use the join operator, so it'll now say, nice to meet you, along with whatever they typed. So grab the join operator that looks like this. Okay, it's under operators. Find the one that says join apple banana. 
grab the answer and drag it down. Join apple banana. Banana is going to be the answer. Let's see what happens. What's your name? Uh, I'm gonna say Bluey again. Apple Bluey. That doesn't make any sense. So instead of saying Apple, have it say, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, Bluey. All right, so what you need to do is after the word you, put a space in there. So now when you run it, nice to meet you, Bluey. Save now. Now, we don't want this nice to meet you to stay up here forever. So my recommendation, and I could have told you this in the beginning, but I think if you've seen it, you'll make more sense. Grab the say hello for two seconds and squish that into it. Dump the original and have it say it for like four seconds. So one more time. Nice to meet you, Bluey. And it stops. Now, we don't know how long it's going to take for somebody to actually answer this question. They may type slow. They may not be paying attention. I was going to have you add a weight to it, but we don't know how long I'm going to answer it. So instead of adding a weight to it, let's add a broadcast. So event. So once it's done doing all that, broadcast, and let's do a new message called your name. Okay. Let's move on to the second character. So now this character, when I receive the broadcast, your name, we're gonna have it ask. So again, we don't know how long people will take to type their answer. We can't set up a time, so we're gonna broadcast an answer. So again, we did the say join broadcast. Below the say join, we broadcast a message your name. So on the other sprite, when I receive the your name, it should now ask a question like, ask, thanks, what's your name? And then give it a chance to answer. And then of course, join the answer. So that was a lot. Ask, thank you, what's your name? And wait. So again, what are we going to do? If you forgot, go back to your previous sprite. It's gonna do the say, join, answer four seconds. So again, that was the say and the join was under operators, the apple banana. Instead of banana, we're going to go back to sensing with the answer. And what was the recommendation? Uh, nice to meet you too in the answer. Don't forget that space and let's see how it's going. Okay, so his name's Bluey. It's nice to meet you, Bluey. Thank you. What's your name? Um, his name is Scratch. It's nice to meet you too, Scratch. Okay, so we're gonna have Scratch ask another question. So again, we don't know how long it's gonna take people to do things, so we can't have it set to waiting a few seconds. So what we need to do now is we need to have Bluey, or whatever this character is, broadcast, and we're gonna have it ask another question. We're gonna do a math question. So let's call it math one. Back to the first sprite. When I receive math one, when I receive math one, I'm going to, sorry, ask, and we'll go nice and easy, what is five plus five? So that was easy because we're gonna get to some hard stuff now. So what we're going to do now is we're gonna do a control. And it's if then else statement. It's an if then else statement. And it goes like this. We're gonna have an answer here. And if people type the right answer, it's gonna say, hey, good job. If they don't type the right answer, it's gonna say, wah, wah. Now it's just gonna say, sorry, try again. So if people say the right answer, 
it's going to say, hey, good job. If they don't, it's going to say something else. So let me show you what that looks like ahead of time. So people are going to ask that. And normally it would say something like, okay, good job. So let's play it. What's your name? Okay, Scratch asked the question, what's the answer? If the answer is 10, but I write 15, it still says good job. So we don't want it to say that, okay? We don't want it just to say good job because people answered. So if, we'll get to that part in a minute. If they said the right answer, we want to say something like, that's correct, good job. Let's just have it show up for like four seconds. If it's not correct, we'll say, I'm sorry, that is not correct. And we'll have it say that for four seconds. Okay, now this is giving you a clue. That little hexagon shape there, that's in these operators here. So, if, they type an answer and it's 10. Okay, this is where it gets a little kind of tricky. So if the answer they typed is 10, say that's correct, good job. If it's not correct, we go here. So let's see what happens. So if I type 10, that's correct, good job. Let's do it again. If I type 12, I'm sorry, that is not correct. Could we add even more to this? Yes. I like to do this part where this join thing. So now I'm gonna say, if, it, if they type the wrong thing, they're gonna say, I'm sorry, the answer is 10, not whatever you typed. Let's see what that looks like. So what is five plus five? Let's say they typed 14. I'm sorry, the answer is 10, not 14. Let's do another one. When they finish this question, let's have it broadcast. Sorry about that, not sure what happened there. Broadcast, and let's do a new message called Math 2. All right. So one more time, when I receive math two, ask what is three times three? Again, we're gonna do an if then else. Again, we could have duplicated it, but I want you to practice understanding why it is what it is. So if they get the right answer, we're going to say correct. Three times three is nine. However, if they get the wrong answer, let's do that little join thing. I'm sorry, three times three is not whatever answer you wrote. So what do we need to include here? Again, that's an operator. So we're gonna say the answer is equal to what? The answer is equal to nine. So if the answer is equal to nine, we're gonna say correct. If it's not, we're gonna say, I'm sorry, that's not the answer. Let's see what that looks like. What is three times three? Let's do 10. I'm sorry, three times three is not 10. Don't forget that space after there. Let's do it again. What is three times three? It is nine. Crick, three times three is nine. So one more time from the beginning, play it all. What's your name? Oh, I'm gonna call him Fido this time. Nice to meet you, Fido. Thank you, what's your name? Uh, still Scratch. It's nice to meet you too, Scratch. 
Hey, what is 5 plus 5? Let's say we typed 19. I'm sorry, the answer is 10, not 19. Hey, what is 3 times 3? I'm sorry, 3 times 3 is not 5. This is perfect. If you've got it to ask, what's your name? What's your name? And reply and ask two math questions, you're good. Make sure you hit the share button. Answer questions on the screen. Don't forget your name. Copy link, copy link, add it to the Google form in Google Classroom. I can't wait to see what you come up with.